E. Welcome viewers, Peter there, Social Foundations and Perspective of Law. We have been discussing the issue of social change, what impacts the social change, and what is our legal understanding of social change. We have looked at various schools of thought in uh, the traditional jurisprudence, as well as great theories that uh, underpin any social change. Today's topic, viewers, is very interesting. African customary law. Well, this takes us to look at the nitty-gritty of a phenomenological civil case known as the burial rights of Silvanus Melea Otieno, a Kenya-born advocate of the High Court who read law in India and came back to Kenya to practice a very reputable lawyer on criminal matters. The case under our prosecution here is about Virginia Edith Wambui Otieno, the wife to the late husband, versus George Ochieng Ogo, representing the clan of the deceased. Kenyans woke up in December 1986 with the news that Silvanus Melea Otieno died and the family members, that is the nuclear family, the wife and the children had made burial arrangements. And this does not go down well with the, his clan that saw this as uh, disobedience, not obeying or an affront to the African customary law and vis-a-vis -vis the law custom to which the deceased belonged. Silvanus Mele Otieno married to Virginia Edith Wambui Otieno, lived their life as a family, married lawfully, and they had their property in Upper Matasia in southern part of Nairobi. But what is the bone of contention? The bone of contention is merely on the fact that there are some customary rights that the Luo community to which the deceased belonged had arrangements and their customary uh, rights to bury one that was born in the clan within the clan. Well, this was an argument that was not expected by many legal minds in the country. The case took so long, the proceedings were published, there was a lot of public participation. Many judges, some were non-African judges, had their views on the matter, but all the same, the wife of the late husband of the deceased was represented by an advocate Dr. John Kaminwa. The clan of the deceased was represented by an advocate, 
that later became a judge, Justice Leonard Otieno Kwach. Two advocates, two parties had strong and valid evidence to support their part of the argument. During the proceedings, so much happened. Eyewitnesses were called, experts of law were called, as well as educated brains. And I remember Professor Duncan Okoth Okombo, a specialist in linguistics and many other areas of Luo customs. Well, the other side or the other party was represented by the lawyer who relied on statutory law and especially the law of succession and the rights of the wife married lawfully to take care of the burial of the husband in such circumstances. This was opposed by the clan of the deceased whose main claim was based on the African customary law and the rules and norms within the Luo customs that if an adult member of the community dies outside the clan, then it is the clan to have the upper hand in decision-making when it comes to the burial rights. The wife of the late husband had put a strong argument about the wish of her husband to be buried uh, on their property in Upper Matasia where they had prepared the place of their graveyard. Well, both sides had got strong points and arguments to put forward. All the same, this is a contestation between two schools of thought. The historical school of thought versus the positivist school of thought. Well, the positivist school of thought looks at the law as it is. Whereas the, uh, the historical school of thought looked at the customs of the community and the rules that the community has been observing from time immemorial. What is substantive in this material case known as civil case number 4873 of 1986. Well, the case passed that uh, Virginia Wambui Otieno, the wife to the deceased, had got the right to take care of the deceased body. This does not go well with the other party that claimed that the clan had the rights. The appeal was filed and the case went to the Court of Appeal. Civil Appeal number three of 1987 overturned the ruling of the High Court and the body of the deceased was handed over to the clan of Silvanus Melea Otieno, simply known as S.M. Otieno, and the body was to be carried almost over 6, 000, 600 kilometers sorry, to his original home in the rural Nyamira Kager, Nyalgunga, in the western part of Kenya. With this argument, whoever won or whoever lo lost is not relevant. What is relevant here is to look at the jurisprudence created by this material case. Well, 
it was a wake up call to all legal minds both in Kenya in Africa and other parts of the world to look at the essence of the dual system the dichotomy of the hybrid system in which the formal state law operates in juxtaposition with the unwritten customary law. So the unwritten customary law carried the day when it comes to S.M. Tino's case. However, still, this is reminding all of us of the social change and how the law fits within the social change. The modern and current generation may not understand why the body was given to the community and the clan in this case other than the lawful married wife of the deceased. There are many questions than answers, but the modern generation has got a different mentality, different attitude, different understanding of the entire process in this case. Following this case, it did not deter many young Kenyans from engaging in mixed marriages or cross-ethnic marriages. Some even deviate from fulfilling customary rights belonging to their individual communities. Yet some do both marriages in customary and traditional way and the state law marriage and also they do the religious marriage. So marriage registered in different forms of legal institutions. This is to safeguard certain values, certain rights that people enjoy. But what is prominent in this kind of case is to show that the mentality of the people is changing the legal understanding about the burial rights is as well changing. There is no statutory law in Kenya indicating and providing for burial rights and in many cases still the will and wish of the deceased if it is not written in a will and the person dies in estate then it is possible that the clan can make such claims and successfully win the case in court. It is clear that the battle between the statutory and the customary law is still on, but what is substantive here is to see a lot of work in progress as per which way to go, whether the former colonial states or colonized states such as the Republic of Kenya should cling on the English traditions when it comes to common law traditions and all laws that uh, operated within the Commonwealth or to look at developing indigenous customary jurisprudence that would again help them in understanding of freedom, justice, and peace among the people. These are all questions that we still battle with, but all the same, we will continue with looking at these cases and their impacts on the society and how such cases also create social change. I'm Peter. Thank you for watching University of Nairobi School of Law Kisum Campus. Hope to see you again in the other episodes.